the summer of 2018, we began a search for an alternative way into the magnificent chambers of Lethrid Swallet, Gower's most celebrated cave. The original route in, following the stream, had become totally blocked with flood debris and sediment. We investigated a promising depression 80 metres down the valley from the old stream sink entrance. With a strong cold draught, there followed two years of teamwork turning the unknown into the known. There it is. There it is. Hold. How far can you see? I can see about six foot down, easy. Blasting cold air like one o'clock. It's a solid wall. Yep. Now it's obviously pretty recent. It's looking okay, isn't it? Head first. That's, I think he spent too much time with Phil, hasn't he? Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's why they're both a very good oh, and a very cold. bad combo. Oh, flailing legs. Give us the tape. Yeah. And uh, has it got a club on the end? Yeah, that's a bit safer than sending Gareth down there. Yeah. That was getting in your way, was it? Yeah, it's the next. It's holding everything, I think. I think actually it's clear after that. Oh my gosh, there's a huge great hole. Absolutely. Is everyone happy to pull me back out? Yeah, yeah. Goodbye, Val. Yeah, you're yeah, all yeah, anchored yeah. around me at the moment. Okay. I'm not sure where it goes on. It might go on this way. It might be too tight. Oh, okay. I see where it goes. It's under yeah. here. Is it? Yeah. Oh, right. I mean, that's where the air's coming from. This is all loose. It's all just falling in. We should be able to dig that out. We need permission to start doing that. Yeah, I think so. Can't see very deep, but it looks like smallish boulders that can be removed. Somewhere up there we have Andy. Oh, it's quite a long way up. <laughs> there he is. Did you put the rope over that thing there? Oh, well, for lifting? Well, at least for holding it. Okay, it's just caught on the leg, a bit further down. If water goes down in there, they can then go in that way. Okay, you I agree with you. Line. Well, there's yeah. a lot of it to come out if it does come out. Not going. Well, that wasn't very impressive. I'm oh, sorry about that. I would need to be a bit more <laughs> explosive. You probably moved about eight tons, four centimetres downwards, Peter. <laughs> it's all right, I think there'll be a way. Whoa. <laughs> this is taking out the flake that's blocking the way down. Oh, a sizable chunk. <laughs> After excavating the entrance rift, we found it split into two slots, one narrow and upwards, and one very narrow and twisting downwards. This is our rift up here. It looks like it's negotiable, but you've got to remove this, I think. 30 centimetres, 35 centimetres wide. The roof goes up 20 oh. feet. Right, Antonio can now peer around the corner. But this block that's here will come out, so that'll make it a bit easier for it. So she's now standing up in bigger passage around the corner. Right, that's you down below in the bottom of the rift. Tree roots, and it's over two metres high this year. There's some rocks which are, I don't want to touch too much. And then below us, that parallel rift persists. A stack of boulders and slightly more dodgy bit of roof picture on the corner and I saw that there was uh, a bit of space beyond but uh... and then down in the floor here a passage which is takes the water so if we took that red thing by your helmet out yeah you could get in could you yeah well done for going past there <laughs> <laughs> right, I need my, um, I need some drills. 
I think a second hole of there, how bad would that be? Not too bad because you can duck underneath. Yeah, it's a good job. Ah, success. Do it yourself, okay? That's the nature of the material. And then. The descent into Bung Chamber was guarded by a one-ton, loosely jammed block. This was nervously passed. And eventually, even more nervously, prized off. Icarus covered in muddy water. Quite roomy. Now this is the most roomy part of the cave. Oh, well, this is all crumbly stuff. But it's a laminated stuff that's settled on top of the bank, like and then there's Absolutely, sand on yeah. top of that and stuff. Isn't oh it? yeah. I just move one or two of these stones, just make it slightly easier to cool that bit. Just lying there. Yeah, just lying there. Like that end was just slightly stuck in the mud there. Um, yeah, just sit on surface. Up in there, it's a choky area. Little space up there. It would be viable for us to remove some bits and pieces of this. Seems to be something up there. I thought there was some sort of a little bit of a gap on the right there. There's quite a lot of draft coming straight at me here. Yeah. From you. Quite a lot of, sp of space in below. Yeah. So there's another level beneath us. It goes absolutely nowhere. Oh, the one straight ahead, yeah. yeah. The tube ended abruptly at a blockage made of rocks embedded in a pinkish mud matrix, the red choke. The sediment was a sandy clay and curiously separated big rounded blocks that could fall out without much notice. This looked like very old material and we felt it was a good option to dig this out to reach the annex chamber of Lethrid. The old survey we were using implied that we were just metres away. Digging the red choke was a major team activity and gravity made it a bit nervy at times. But tons of rock were eventually transported to the surface. Flooding sometimes destabilised our dig but it was encouraging to see the water rush into the cave to what was obviously open passage on the other side of the red choke. Pete's there, he's doing the drag tray and then he will recklessly throw boulders down here. Right. Yeah. This is a self-digging choke at the moment. A state of play after the last lot of rock fall. And some bits that have dropped themselves. So now we don't trust that roof up there. We're going to attempt to make a scaffolding tunnel of some sort. Right, we've got one piece of scaffing. We could just put a wooden chalk in there. Well, alternatively, if we just put a clamp on this bar, that'll stop that one going anywhere. Definitely had a few chunks come off there, pretty effectively. And then that's been broken. You can see there's a crack right through. The boulder now completely disappeared. It's a remnant scaff, and Andy's sitting spaciously in the hole. I think the, uh, all the organic matter I was putting out yeah. has either gone forwards or off to the right. The mind boggles to think that under there you know that there is something that is big and has been there for you know, thousands of years and that somebody can go in there for the first time. That is not a small piece of... 
God, we can build in blocks out of this. Cut up the rock and put it on the side. That's the one I was a bit worried about too. Mm -hmm. A nice stone wall here. Mm. Which is backing up all the mud. So there's space under these boulders here. After a couple of months digging, a corner on the right hand wall was opened up and we could peer through a tiny, very drafty window to open passage and a sort of shaft. First of all, I'm just going to record what the hole, which we think goes down for quite a way. Certainly about three metres. We had expected to go up into the annex, but this went down. I don't know how far I'll get on this. I'm going to get my body in, but there's no space up it. If goes down an extra metre beyond what we can see. Can you get in there? Yeah, there's a big cave down in this side. A big cave all the way around? That's not going the right way. There's a big cave down here. Yeah, the drop down is about 10 foot. There might be something here, around the back of this, this red mud here, which is going off in the other direction. But I can't tell. So I'm going to put a ladder down. You're right, you can yeah, have yeah. space. No problem. Right, it's choked in that direction. Completely. Uh, well, yeah. And then it goes down into a, what would have been a sump. Did it go through? I still want to tell at this point. It doesn't look too helpful actually at the moment. Well, that surprises me. Hope began to fade when the passage went into a very tight corkscrew at the bottom. But we did not give up. Down to the tiny hole. And you're going to want to sit on the edge of that rock where your toes are on. Uh, it's going down into the tube. And by doing that, I'm also dropping the flow of air as well. The camera is going down into the hole. So we can't tell what direction the tube underneath is See, I'm wondering if it's going off from the left. There's a little passageway. Height of the passage up to a metre. Definitely some rock will have to come out to make it agreeable. Just beyond I can see a place where a person would fit. Beyond this, if we could just do something with this flake in the foreground. It looks like it would be, you know, it's doable that little bit. And it looks like it's slightly wider beyond. Yeah, we would both fit through that. Because no, it's not much point in making a cave that's too small for anybody. I mean, now you're doing for fitting. Yeah, you did alright. You didn't just drink coffee all afternoon. <laughs> it's muddy. It's very, very muddy. <laughs> but yes, tight. Get purchased properly. There I am. I'm glad to be out of the hole. I think I've got most of the mud in it on me. <laughs> How much do you want to put in the bucket, Andy? Uh, about half full. We've just been digging mud out, but we've managed to break a break through the flakes so we can fit. Now the mud's been hauled out. That's a bit full, that. Yeah. Both Antonia and Claire managed to pass through the squeeze to the portcullis. 
a low squirm into a small enlargement where the only way on was drafting thin rifts. So that marks the current end of the cave. That's probably close to the, the, the sump levels, but it still drafts like mad through the final slots. But it just did not feel that what we had found could possibly fit with the terrain depicted in the Lethrid survey. So we started to look for another option on the surface. This was a perfect moment for another more accurate 1960s survey to be discovered in a private collection. And this placed the annex 50 metres further west. So using a LiDAR surface image and an overlay of the new survey, we identified where to look next. And so began our next dig. Found another one. Did it look good? Well, I can't tell because you need to clear the moss. I like, I like this up here. I really do hope you find a new one.